I think some couches have wonderful patterns. Hello and welcome to my channel Haley Marie Vintage. Today I'm going to be showing you the stuff from my sewing pile. I've been very busy during this quarantine. Um, I've been trying to take advantage of the time we have in our homes undistracted to get a ton of sewing projects that I've always wanted to do done. Um, a lot of these are like practice patterns so I use like really cheap fabric that I do really like and will still wear but it's not like the fabric I am saving for like the most amazing projects. Um, also today my lighting might be funky and by today I mean for who knows how many videos one of my light AC adapters went out so I'm gonna have to figure out how to get that replaced and given everything in Seattle is going to still be shut down till about I think the 31st of May who knows when that'll get to happen. So we're gonna dig in to the mending pile. So this is the mending pile, or the sewing pile. These are all the projects I've gotten done. Uh, I think I did my last one around like the end of February. We'll get started with the thing on the top. Um, so this here, you may recognize from a Redbird vintage box video. Um, I just wanted to hem this. This came as a full length like maxi dress and I thought it would look much cuter shorter and um, a lot of the skirt was really stained so actually in hemming it I was able to get rid of a lot of the weird stains on this. This I just did the normal hand hem here and on the lining here I also I guess hand hemmed because I hate myself. I don't know why I didn't just sew this one by machine but I didn't. So that one is also hand hemmed so I'll show you the before and after on this but I think the shorter length is much cuter and it'll make it a lot more of a versatile dress for me. Okay, next up we have a refashion. Um, this was a men's shirt um, and I made it into a corset cover. I did this using Evelyn Wood's Vintage Sewing School. Um, she, I am subscribed to that and I use that to kind of learn the basics of refashioning and I really love this and I'm very excited to wear it this summer. Um, I don't own a lot of tank tops that are very vintagey looking so I'm excited to have this in there. And I will probably make a few more of these. And this was also like a really soft men's shirt. So it's super comfy. Um, and then I just used some lace and ribbon I found at Seattle Recreative. So this whole top is upcycled, which I always think is really cool. Next up, this is I think the first shirt I have made from scratch. I've refashioned quite a few shirts, but this was the first one I made from scratch. This is just a 1950s pattern. I'm gonna put all the patterns for these listed down below because I think if you guys really like them you can go try to hunt around on Etsy and eBay to get them but this is just like a cute gardening pattern it has the like upside down side zip that's very 50s it's a wee bit big for me so next time I do it I'll adapt the pattern so one of the reasons I sewed it in this is this was only two dollars a yard so it's kind of no big deal if it doesn't fit the best um, and so now next time I do this I'll be willing to do it with like a nicer fabric and just know that I need to take in the seams like by just a wee bit um, but it's still really cute and I love the sweetheart neckline on this and I will definitely be using this pattern again and again because this I believe only took a yard of fabric um, so I have all these different fabrics that I've thrifted that I only have a yard of so this will be a really good way to use those oh I didn't button this up Luckily there's only five buttons on this, so, and they're all rather large and not hard to deal with. I think a late 1940s patterned shirt. Um, I also have some old, like, cellulite buttons on this, um, but it's super cute. So I did screw up on this pattern, so next time I do it, um, I will make sure to put the buttonholes marked at the beginning. I forgot to mark the buttonholes and the button placement. And that really came and like bit me in the butt because, you know, um, my buttons are a little bit too far over so now this fits really really tight and not the most comfortable. Um, most of these patterns, FYI, I had to, I drop the armhole usually by about a half inch to give me enough space to like feel comfortable in it. Um, and so I did that with this and the last shirt I showed you and I will also have done it, I think, to almost all of the garments in this pile. Because um, I find that 50s patterns, I just need that like extra half inch of sleeve width, depth, whatever, so I can like do this. <laughs> um, so this I did do that with, um, this is a dolman sleeve, um, and then you can't really see it, but there's a really cute detail of a flap of fabric over here. Um, this maybe wasn't the best print choice either, I think I'm really excited to make this in like a basic cotton. 
Um, and then, yep, I like the buttons and I like the shape and it looks really, really nice. You just can tell that I did the buttonholes too far over. This was also my first bound buttonhole experience and everybody rants about how much they suck. I disagree and I don't know if I'll ever do a button any other way again. <laughs> um, so that was really exciting technique to learn. I think it looks really nice and I like that you can sub out the colors for other colors um, so you could make really fun buttonholes. But yeah, so that is this garment. Next up, this one I did not make from a pattern. This one I made from Angela Clayton's Gathered Skirt Tutorial, I believe. It might have been. I think it was the Gathered Skirt Tutorial for the like shapes of the boxes. But then I think I did the waistband, the style of the circle skirt, just because it's kind of my preference to not top stitch around the outside of the garment. This I also kind of made after I inherited a skirt for my grandma that I really love and so I also made this kind of to that pattern. That one is getting a little bit small um, but I wanted to learn how to make these and now I'll have lots of really fun gathered skirts to make. Next up is a kind of series of dresses. These were, um, this was supposed to be all of my April and May projects so we're way ahead of schedule. Um, because I obviously made all of this other stuff while doing this and it's only like the beginning of May. Um, but this was the first dress in the series of dress I made. Um, I had fabrics that I really cared about for this pattern so this was the first one I made. It was a satin um, and it wasn't a fabric I cared that much about. Um, I think it turned out really nice. I had to learn how to gather and make things not look like garbage bags. Um, this material when gathered wrong looks strikingly like a garbage bag so I had to redo the gathers on this a few times and I had to learn about how you need to like on some fabrics you need to like sew multiple rows and then pull those tight so that way the gathers don't like do anything weird so I learned how to do that with this one um there was a curve there and then I believe I had to shorten the bodice on this pattern and then like always I had to take the armholes down a wee bit but I think it's super cute and it'll be a really versatile black dress. Admittedly, I don't know how long this one will stay in my wardrobe, but I'll make sure it finds a good home if it doesn't ultimately stay in my wardrobe. Um, next up is maybe, I have like two almost favorite dresses that I made recently. So this is from the same pattern, it's just a different variation. Um, so in this variation you have a little like Peter Pan collar and then a bow. I think this is so cute, I love the pattern. Um, this is kind of, this is like a rayon, I don't want to say a jersey because it's not stretchy, but um, it's like a nice soft rayon material, so this dress is really comfortable. Again, I took up the waistline, actually even further than the black dress, and then I also lowered the arms, um, but I love this. Um, this makes me feel so cute and pretty. This one here was the last of the series of these dresses. Um, this is um, from the same 19, early 1950s pattern. Um, this one was yet another collar variation that is kind of more of a sailor collar. This is made out of upholstery fabric, so it's like couch material. Just loved this couch material, so I didn't care and I made it into a dress anyway. Um, so it's like definitely a heavier weight, which is actually nice for Seattle Springs because it's actually still pretty cold here. And so this dress will actually be kind of warm. There was like nothing really too crazy here. The collar is detachable at any point in time. I did have to cut down like the gathering in the skirt because this is upholstery material so I couldn't gather it as tightly as I did for the other two skirts. So it maybe has a little bit less flair, but I still think it's super cute. This was going to be the dress that I wore to my younger sister's graduation, but that's obviously been cancelled. Um, or not cancelled, it's been delayed till August and I am not wearing upholstery fabric in August in San Diego. I will be wearing a different dress, but this would have been the graduation dress um, that actually would have been actually I think what is it the third um, so it's the third when I'm filming this and she was supposed to graduate on the 8th so this video will actually come out the day before she was supposed to graduate so happy graduation next up we have a dress this is from a late 50s early 60s pattern I bought it because I love these sleeves I have a dress with these types of sleeves and it's one of my favorites in my collection so I wanted to like have a pattern that I really enjoy to do that. This also has that really full skirt. Um, and I took the time and put lace on the skirt. Again, hand sewn. I kind of hate myself, but I love details and projects like this. And this is why I love vintage clothing is because of those details. So it seems silly 
to not take the time to do those on the garments I'm going to take the time of making. But yeah, this is just like a basic boat neck. This one is the first back zip. All the rest of these are side zips because they are 50s and they're early 50s so they're more particular to be side zips. But this is my first back zip. It's a little uneven. The sleeves aren't set in 100% the best but I'm still pretty proud of this and I love it. It's so cute and flirty. We're gonna round it off with our last one. This is maybe the, my favorite skirt I've made. So this is a 10 paneled um, it's still not a full circle skirt, despite the fact it's 10 panels. Um, this is also a 50s pattern. Um, I chose this pattern because I really like this waistband here. It kind of goes up and under the bust, and it's super cute and sweet. And so I just had to have it. <laughs> um, and so I've made this, and I also could do it without, with like out the fancy curve waistline, waistline, waistband. Or you could also do this garment with the like is it the gourd part of the skirt I don't know the the panel part of the skirt forming that um, I just didn't think that looked as nice and I kind of figured it might not be the most flattering on me so I didn't do that but I might try it in the future we'll see I have plenty of time this is also some upholstery fabric I got this at an estate sale and this will be great for winter it is a heavier skirt and I think this is like a really nice winter floral pattern. I do think all my upholstery patterns you can tell are supposed to be couches, but I don't care. I think some couches have wonderful patterns. Um, so I thought that was fun, but that is it for my sewing pile. Um, I'm really proud of what I've accomplished during this time. However, if you need space and you don't feel like being productive during this time, don't push yourself and don't like make yourself unhappy because I know there's kind of like two different types of people in this or we I vary um, so I sewed a ton of these in like a few weeks and then I felt super burnt out and so I've just been kind of like schmucking around and playing computer games and watching like Netflix series and like that's totally okay too I think you should do what makes you happy for me during this time sewing was very much something that I could, it was almost meditative for me. It helped me during the beginning of this because um, it was the first three weeks of quarantine that I sewed a ton. And during those first three weeks of quarantine, I just think it made me feel better um, because I could spend on my weekends. I've had a really hard time with weekends because I, I, all that free time gives me a lot of space where I just kind of worry and get really anxious. And so sewing really helped me because it was kind of meditative and I could put on an audiobook and like sew for like 8 to 12 hours on my weekends and it just helped me like pass the time without freaking out about everything that's going on in the world um, because I mean it's heavy um, what's going on in the world is hard um, and I think everybody's been touched by what's happening everybody knows someone who's been laid off everybody knows somebody who's struggling to pay rent and at least for me like I know people who are actually sick and it's really scary and so having an escape in sewing has been really important to me. And so I just wanted to share my projects with you and kind of share some of the joy that can come out of a really hard time that we're all going through. Um, and I think also realizing that none of us are going through this alone. We all are experiencing very similar things in kind of an un... There's not like a really recent time in history, I think, where we've all been so feeling the same things and going through the same things. So like we're all in this together and it will get better. Um, and until then, I guess I'll be sewing like a crazy person. That is it for this video. If you enjoy vintage content as well as sewing and thrifting, definitely hit that subscribe button. I post every single Friday. I will see you next time.